Hi, everybody. Today, we're going to begin talking about jazz. And jazz is the only genre of music that we can claim as exclusively American. It started in the southern part of the United States, and the musicians were predominantly Black Americans who lived in New Orleans and other southern cities, and they performed in the street, in bars, in uh, taverns, and um, clubs. And these people were bringing in influences from the African culture, from the uh, Latin culture, and they were creating a new style. Now, the earliest jazz actually occurred before 1900, which is why we're skipping in your book. And we are going to jazz before we go to something else. So the term was first used in 1917, but the style was coming together closer to 1900. If you look in your book on page 382, this is where the information about jazz begins. And you have photos of people who were famous for different types of jazz, like Duke Ellington and Louis Armstrong, probably names that you may have heard. Um, there's also a picture of the Superior Band of New Orleans, and this was a Dixieland band. Dixieland is one of the forms of jazz that we'll be looking at. Now, jazz music was originally intended for dancing, but it did evolve to music that was meant for listening to. And um, American brass bands had an influence on the sound and the instrumentation. Um, a lot of the music originally came from work songs, spirituals, gospel hymns, um, dances, folk tunes, popular songs, and piano pieces. And with saying that, one of the earliest forms of jazz you will find on page 384 in your book, and it is called Ragtime. And ragtime is music for piano. Um, it is the kind of music that you would have heard played in a saloon or a honky tonk. And it is um, not easy to play. Um, it has a very steady beat in the left hand while the right hand travels all over. And the right hand plays the melody, the left hand keeps the beat. And it's kind of an oompa kind of thing with the left hand. Um, one of the best known artists in this area was named Scott Joplin. And he lived quite a bit of his life in Sedalia, Missouri and St. Louis, Missouri. Um, he created this music um, from ideas that he had. Uh, most of his compositions are well known. Um, the Entertainer is one of his compositions. The Maple Leaf Rag is another. And you will find in your videos, in your module, uh, History of Ragtime and The Entertainer. Uh, now, it is not being performed. Well, yes, it is. It's actually a recording of Scott Joplin. Now, he was performing so early in the 20th century that we really don't have film of him, but he was recording albums and having music published at that time. Now, let me see if I can get to the slide. Here it is. 
So this basically tells you that the right hand or the melody is syncopated rhythms and the left hand stays on the beat. Um, it says that the rhythms come from African-American folk music and there is some influence from Europe as well. Scott Joplin was called the king of ragtime. He was trained in classical music first and he taught and composed in St. Louis until 1909 when he moved to New York City and continued to compose and publish music there. Now, he did not live much past that. He passed away in 1917. And his most famous in pieces, as I said, are probably the Maple Leaf Rag and the Entertainer. Now, I would like for you to pause this video and go to your module and look at the videos of the entertainer and the history of ragtime for me. Now, another popular style of jazz is the blues. And the blues can either be vocal or it can be just instrumental. Um, most of the blues that we're familiar with are probably vocal. Um, it came from folk music, work songs, spirituals, things like that. There are several different types of blues. There's country blues. There's Chicago blues. Um, there is Delta blues. There is New Orleans style blues. Most of it is built the same way. There are 12 measure lines and you will have the first line will be a statement of something. Then the second line is a repeat of that statement. And the third line is an answer to that statement on each verse. And the melody remains pretty much the same. The first and second lines will be pretty much the same. The third answering line is the one that's different each time. Now, the lyrics usually are about love gone wrong, um, someone leaving you, um, unrequited love. And very early on, this music was kind of almost condemned because people felt like it was full of sexual innuendo. Now today, we would not hear that. But at that time, you have to remember it was about 1900 and people were very Puritan about things. Now there's a certain style in the music and in the singing of the blues. Um, and people tried as performers to have individual styles. And so they would do different things with their voices. Um, they would scoop into a note they would slide off of a note, fall off of a note, just different techniques to try to make them individual and not like everyone else. Now, some of the blues artists that we're looking at are uh, Louis Armstrong and uh, Bessie Smith. And trying to think who else, let's see. Oh, uh, Muddy Waters. And to let you know, the blues originated in the south of the country. But then as people started to migrate north after the First World War, um, actually Chicago became a center for blues. Um, St. Louis became a center for blues and New York City also did. So this spread over the country from the South and then jazz music became very popular all over the world. So it wasn't just here that people listened to jazz. Now, 
we have in your module, you have an example of a Muddy Waters song and of a Bessie Smith song. Check out the different styles between the two. There's also a story I need to tell you about a very early blues musician. His name is Robert Johnson, and there's a long legend about him. He was a guitarist originally, and he wasn't a very good guitarist, but the only thing that he desired in the world was to be famous as a guitarist and as a musician. And he had a lot of disappointments and he kind of disappeared from the public eye for a while. And when he came back, he was this fantastic expert guitarist and he was using techniques that no one else had ever seen when playing. And it got started that he had made a deal with the devil. He went down to the crossroads, which is what you do in the South. And you meet either a demon or the devil himself. And um, he met the devil, told him what he wanted and was willing to trade his soul for that. The devil took his guitar, strummed it a little bit, gave it back to him. And from then on, he was able to play in this fantastic way that he was when he came back. Um, Robert Johnson played on this myth a lot in the titles and the lyrics of his songs. He was um, country blues because he used his acoustic guitar and sang. And he, some of his titles were Down at the Crossroads or Me and the Devil. So he was playing into this folklore. Now, he ended up passing away at a pretty early age. Um, most people said that the devil had come to collect his soul, but actually he was a heavy drinker and he was using drugs. So we probably know what killed him actually. But if you will check out your videos, you will find that, uh, his form of blues was earlier than the other two and very simple in comparison. Now, another style of jazz that we are looking at is New Orleans style jazz, and this is Dixieland music. And since New Orleans was the center for early jazz, there was a tradition of having instrumental bands that would play for dancing or for parades. And if you've ever seen a funeral procession in New Orleans, um, it's called the front line and people march down the street and the band marches with them. And usually it is mostly horns and they're supported by rhythm instruments. Um, when you see a Dixieland group, it's usually going to have woodwind, piano, drums, stand-up bass, and trumpet or some other kind of brass. Um, now, the rhythm section is the most important, and the rhythm section remains the same for any kind of jazz group, and that's always going to be a bass, a piano, and drums. Now, the other instruments will vary depending upon uh, the director of the group or, you know, just how the members got together. And um, usually everyone plays together the first verse of something. And then after that, the rhythm section continues, but one solo instrument improvises or makes up a solo um, for the second verse. And then the solo instrument will switch and you'll have another improvised solo by a different instrument and so on until all of them have done an instrumental solo. Now, 
also included in Dixieland music is something called scat singing. And scat singing was very popular for people like Louis Armstrong and Ella Fitzgerald. And what it is is using nonsense syllables and singing those in an improvised way to go with the song or to be a part of the song. So you will find information about this, I think, let me make sure, on page 389 in your book, New Orleans Style Jazz. And this will tell you a little bit more about um, the groups. There is a photo of one group on page 390 that is a New Orleans style Dixieland group. And this one is led by a man named King Oliver. And he was very famous in the 20s. This is his Creole jazz band. And if you look on the front row, the man playing the trumpet is Louis Armstrong. So he later went on to have his own groups over the years and do different styles of jazz with those groups. Now I do have a recording of Louis Armstrong doing When the Saints Go Marching In. Um, that is in your module. And there is some scat singing in that on the part of his female backup singer. Louis Armstrong doesn't do any, but you will also see how each instrument uh, does an improvised solo in his group. Now, other forms of jazz. We have swing, which you will find on page 391. And this is music that came a little bit later. This is music that has written out parts. It's not usually improvised. And it's primarily for dancing. And it's primarily big band. Um, usually saxophones, brass, and rhythm. There will be a piano, and there will be a bass, and there will be drums. The saxophone is one of the most important solo instruments in this type of jazz. The melody is usually performed by the whole section of that type of instrument. And the saxophone and the brass, whatever the brass may be, it may be trombones or trumpets, will usually play riffs off each other. And it's like one plays first and the other answers to them. Now, 12 bar blues is used in swing music, but uh, most of this music is not blues. It is different. And you will find an example of a swing piece in your module as well. Now the biggest swing bands, the big bands that played in nightclubs and supper clubs and things like that, and were the most famous were the groups led by uh, Count Basie, Glenn Miller, Tommy Dorsey, uh, Benny Goodman, and he was called the King of Swing. And then we had others who were like, um, oh, Duke Ellington and George Gershwin did some. And so there is an example of, uh, I think a George Gershwin and possibly someone else in your module as well. You can see pictures of some of these bands on page 392 in your book. And you can kind of see how they performed and how they operated. Now, bebop jazz. This was a little bit later again. And this was meant for listening, not dancing. 
And usually this is a smaller group. So four to six players. These are very upbeat, quick tempoed um, pieces of music. And the beat is kept constant by the drums. And it's pretty fast. Um, there's a lot of different rhythms and you can't predict what they're gonna be. Um, the phrases, the melody, they're different lengths and it's kind of in theme and variations form. Now, a lot of performers who were well-known for bebop music are Dizzy Gillespie on the trumpet, Thelonious Monk on the piano, Charlie Parker on the alto sax, and he was probably the best known and the most influential of those people. Um, you have a, I think, a Dizzy Gillespie example um, in your videos. And so you need to watch that. And then if you look on page 394, we have cool jazz, free jazz and jazz rock, which is a fusion of two different genres. Now, cool jazz started in the late 1940s. It's more calm and relaxed than bebop. And it was more written out than improvised. Free jazz started in the 1960s. And it is solo sections that could go on for 10 minutes or could go on for three minutes. It depended upon the musician. It's all improvised and it's improvisation by more than one person at once. It's usually multiple players improvising at the same time. Um, that's why it's called free jazz. Um, they had more rhythmic and harmonic freedom doing that than they would have were it not improvised. Um, jazz rock, we also have the fusion. We also have country, let's see, jazz country. Um, there are several different types of, of fusions. Anything you can put a jazz sound with, any genre, that can be a fusion. Um, this happened in the late 60s, and it was more electric instruments. Um, this is the time that guitars and synthesizers and all kinds of things came into use. Um, there were ideas and instruments from non-Western music as well, uh, sitars from India. Um, different sounds and the emphasis was on the group sound. So jazz rock fusion would have been improvisation with rock rhythms. Jazz country would be using country music and jazz together. So it just depends on the kind of thing you like as to what you would have listened to. Now, Miles Davis is well known. He's a trumpeter and he is well known for all three of these forms. Um, he was an improviser and you will have an example in your module of a piece of his. Um, he was one of those people that in the late sixties began using drugs pretty heavily and his music became stranger and stranger as he did that. So some of his later music is um, confusing at least to listen to. Um, now, these are all styles that came kind of, you know, after 1950. So jazz has continued and is still popular in clubs, 
and in, um, you know, like fancy hotel lobbies, they'll have a little combo playing for the entertainment of the guests. And they're usually little jazz groups. But um, this week, this is what we're looking at. And I would like for you to take advantage of the videos I've provided. Uh, if there's anything that you are interested in seeing or any artist, there's a lot on YouTube and you can go there and find it. Um, remember that your quiz will be open on Thursday morning and will close Sunday at midnight. And this is only over 1900 to 1945, okay? We're going to go back and pick up some of the material I skipped because it's actually after 1945. And we'll be looking at uh, the origins of rock and roll and country music, music for stage and screen. So we still have some stuff to, to look at. But um, jazz, there are so many different types that you can avail yourself of and so many different types to know about that I wanted to make sure that we got this in the right time period. So until next week, um, when I hope to meet with you again, um, go on and go through your assignments, your discussion, watch all your videos, and don't forget your quiz, okay? All right, I will hopefully see you next week and thank you.